What is going on, guys? It is Bucky, of course. Why do I say that? Like, you would be expecting someone else. Anyways, it's Bucky, and welcome to your 51st Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, we are finally getting into the good stuff, and yes, I'm talking about frameworks. Now, no matter how hard you think about it, a framework is not the process of building picture frames. So get that out of your head. What a framework is, is it's pretty much the built-in classes and methods that come pre, I guess, installed in Objective-C. And uh, they're there to make your programming life easier. Uh, for example, when we import the foundation framework, the most common built-in method we use is nslog to print stuff out. That's a method that we didn't have to make, it came built-in. But the cool thing is, foundation not only has that method but it has hundreds more just built in so again a framework is built in classes and methods um another framework that you guys might be familiar with is the application framework and this has methods for things like creating menu menus and toolbars and windows and stuff and uh, a little point of interest if you are developing on the mac you probably heard the term coco a bunch Coco like chocolate. What Coco is is pretty much the application and frame foundation framework. So it's pretty much just you know a bunch of classes that you import and methods. It's nothing special. So uh, I don't know, just kind of nickname I guess. So you see we imported this foundation framework right here, and this pretty much imports a bunch of different methods. So it would be. I don't know, not easier, but it would be better program practice to import only the classes we need because there this includes a bunch of different classes or header files. But you know, this is a lot easier and for typing on this little screen on YouTube, I like to only import one thing. So this would do for now, but if you're uh, building a program, you should only import what you need. So let's go ahead and get to the tutorial. Now, the tutorial is about objects from these classes. So we're going to be building number objects, but check this out. We built int and floats before, and I spelled float wrong, irrelevant. But the thing is, these are pretty much just data types. We need actual objects. These are not objects. You can't call a method on int, like int x, x, do this method. So what we need to be able to do sometimes is treat numbers like objects. So let's go ahead and do that right now and I'll show you how. The built-in class ns number is the one you need to use when creating objects. So I'm going to make two objects, one named Bucky int and one named uh let's see Bucky float and I don't don't name it like number int because you know we want to be able to distinctively see what our object is. You know there's nothing built in Objective C named Bucky. I built that. I did it with my own hands. And anyways, let's go ahead and we just created two objects pretty much. Now let's go ahead and assign them to something. So let's go ahead and take Bucky int. And what we need to do is we need to set it equal to uh, initialization method built in from the ns number class and what this pretty much does is pretty much creates this object so let's go ns number whoa I definitely typed that way off ns number and those this is a class right here ns number and in this class there is built in method to create integer objects and this is number with integer right there. It already typed it in force. Oh, and a bunch of extra crap too. Thanks Objective-C, you're the best. So what this method does is it lets you assign a value to your object. So let's go ahead and assign something simple like 100. So now this Bucky in object, remember it's not a variable. It's an object with a starting value of 100. So this is the method that you need to use. And check this out. What about for this float? Do you use the same method? No, I don't think so. So Bucky float, each type of data or each type of object has its own specific method. So ns number, whenever you want to create a float object, it's number with float. 
and for the float value put like 145 and remember floats just a uh, integer with the decimal point point like six seven or something like that so now we have an integer object and a float object now I cannot stress this enough these are not integers these are not variables so check this out ns log at if we go ahead and you know put percent i and you're like oh bucky int this is just like you know a regular variable so let's go ahead and type bucky int and let's go ahead and run this and see what we get check this out we get a hundred and one million and eighty four thousand seven hundred thirty six WTF is that that is because this is an object not an integer so maybe that made it clear that you know this is an object that's the objects you know don't even worry about what that is but anyways you can't do that now what I do want to teach you guys is in order to retrieve that value and store it in an integer or excuse me an integer variable here's what you need to do say so say we actually want to store that var value in an integer called like x so int x of course and go ahead and take that object bucky int and in order to retrieve the value it has built in special retrieval methods so in order to retrieve a value from a um, integer object you put into value this is also a built-in method we don't have to create this it's already built in it's a method specifically designed to retrieve the value so in order to um, take the value of float and store it in a variable called y remember you want to make a float variable not an integer one or else you're gonna get messed up stuff take your float object bucky float and the special method for this is float value and again these methods you don't have to memorize them there's usually a table you can just look at but uh I'll put this uh, source code in the link below and if someone can find a link to that table just put it in I just know these by heart so uh, now we can go ahead and since we retrieve those values and actually put them in a variable we can do stuff like this nslog percent i and remember percent f for float and now let's go ahead and x and y so now if you build and run this save it hopefully you don't get any errors check it out 100 and 145 it should it should be 0.67 but this is how your computer stores numbers we'll learn how to fix that later on but i mean it's close enough so that's that for this tutorial if you want any of the source code actually go get the source code click on the link below and make sure to sign up for my forum it's pretty awesome so thank you guys for watching and uh, any questions or if anyone has that link please post it in my forum I'll thank you a hundred times but uh you know we'll be clearing this up in the next tutorials to come and uh, yeah don't forget to subscribe I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later